The Marlboro Panthers set to take on Neshoba in the Division IIA Central Mass Football Championship. And early on, it was some trouble for the Panthers on their third play. The pitch is bad from Schmidline, and now it's a scrum for the ball. In the end, the Chieftains would land on it, and two plays later, that would set up this run from Jake Fire, putting Neshoba up 7-0 after the extra point. 7-0 is how the first quarter would end, but in the second, the Marlboro offense got it going as Luke Goulet busts through the middle of the line, gets to the sideline, and is down inside the 10 for a big run, setting up an Owen Capadonna one-yard run, tying the game at seven. And then next possession, Capadonna this time breaking free down the sidelines. He's taken down, and this is not a replay. That would set up yet another one-yard run from Owen Capadonna. Now in the third quarter, it's Evan Schmidline faking the pitch, and he takes it down the sideline for yet another big run from the Panthers. And why not give Capadonna the pitch this time in his third one-yard rushing touchdown on the game. The pesky Chieftains wouldn't go away as Sam Belinsky drops back, and he hits Breeze Hill on a huge pass just inside the one-yard line, but not quite a touchdown. Belinsky would sneak in to keep Neshoba close. Just when it's looking like a game, Luke Goulet bursts up the middle of the Neshoba defense. No one's going to touch him. He takes it to the house 62 yards, putting the Panthers back up by two scores. But after a long drive, it's Belinsky hitting Jake Fire on this pass, keeping Neshoba in the game. After a three and out by Marlboro, Neshoba's looking to put together another touchdown drive. But here's Matt Passaccio right. with the call. Belinsky looking to pass it out to 15 Hill. Oh, it's a big interception! Capadonna down the right-hand side, and he will go! Touchdown! The next time the Panthers get the ball, it's Luke Goulet again, untouched up the middle, this time for only 35 yards. But it is the nail in the coffin as Marlboro goes on to win the Division IIA Central Mass Championship 42-21. They will take on Falmouth. Saturday in Lemonster for a chance to play in the state championship at Gillette Stadium. It feels great. Uh, it was a battle. Um, the kids, you know, you know, Neshoba had the momentum early in the game and then they started taking it back at 28-21 and uh, we made plays. Owen made that big pick six and uh, our kids just did a great job. They did a great job of keeping their composure early on when Neshoba uh, looked like the better team for a little while in the game, and, but our kids just kept battling. And, now, is this something, is this something um, that you expected, considering the senior leadership that you lost coming into the year? Uh, we thought we were going to be pretty good, yeah. We, we knew we had talented kids and kids that worked hard and kids that make plays and kids that are effective in other sports. So we knew we had athletes um, and we knew we had kids that could make plays for us. And can you talk to us about some of the adjustments that you made coming into the second half? Well, they had, you know, they showed us a defense that they hadn't shown, so it took us a little while to get going. But once we figured that out and got everyone blocking the right people, uh, you know, the result was 35 points on offense and, and one defensive score. So um, the kids made the adjustments they needed to. Can you talk to us a little bit about the season that Owen Capadonna had and the game that he had today? Uh, he's, you know, he does this on a weekly basis, makes plays. Um, that was a significant play that he made, um, one-handed catch and a pick six, so uh, we've come to expect Owen make, to make plays. Any points of emphasis going into your next game? Um, we're going to have to stop the option, they're an option team, so uh, we really haven't seen an option team, but obviously we practice against it during the week, but um, I don't know, we're, uh, we're going to enjoy this for a little while and then figure that one out. Talk to us a little bit about how you feel right now as a champion. It's, it's amazing, honestly, like, we've been putting in so much work. All these kids together since seventh grade, and we've had this bond. We just keep going harder and harder. It just feels great. Can you talk to us about some of the adjustments that you made going into the second half. Well, they they were prepared for us. We already played them once, so they they knew it was coming. First quarter, they were stopping us up the middle all the time, but we we pointed out some key spots and we capitalized on it. We capitalized on their mistakes, just pushed harder and harder. Now, how do you guys stay focused going into the next game, considering you just won a championship? I mean, just got to keep rolling, just stay, stay positive. We know if Alma's a good team, 
they're going to be tough, but, you know, we're, we're a tough team. We'll be good. Talk to us about how it feels to be a champion. It's unbelievable. You know, I've been dreaming of this for my whole life, ever since I started playing football, and, you know, it just feels so good, especially with these guys. I've been playing with them since fifth grade, so it's just an unbelievable feeling to be able to win with them. Can you talk to us about what you guys did differently in the second half, considering you really started to dominate them rushing the ball? You know, they came out with us that five-man front. You know, we were, we were pretty confused, but once we sat down and got our assignments, we got understood what we had to do, and we just did it. You know, we, we were physical, more physical second half, and that's really the key to why we won. Now, how are you feeling? We saw that you, uh, you went down there in the first half. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I feel great. Um, I was a little scared. It was more of a shock thing, but my knee's definitely all right. It's definitely holding up, so I'm all right.